We're not going to talk on the parable of the Good Samaritan. So the parable of the Good Samaritan, and I would like someone to read with a loud voice, Luke 10, 25 to 37. So who would like to read that? We all know the story of it and we've had it in Sunday schools, kids. And, but we're going to look at it a different way this morning. So Luke 10, 25 to 37. Who's going to volunteer? And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength with all thy might, and thy neighbour as thyself. Oh, sorry, got 37. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbour? And Jesus answering him said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell by feet, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side, and likewise a Levite. When he was at the place, he came and looked on him. Passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host. And said unto him, Take care of it, and whatever you spend, but it is more, when I come again, I will repay it. Which now of these three do you think was a neighbour unto him? The one that fell among the feet. And he said, He that showeth mercy on then said Jesus unto him, Go and do likewise. So this this is called a parable. Thanks, Don. A parable is a, a signifies a placing of one thing beside another with a view of comparison. It's dealing with the earthly things with a spiritual meaning. That, that's what a parable is. And this is a parable. Now this parable is a model lesson on loving and helping those in need, isn't it? Yeah, when you when you read it, that's what it's about. It's about helping people, as as Anne said before. There's people out there that need help. Don't walk on the other side of the road. It's about that. But there's a there's a hidden meaning in this, and 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 this is the story of redemption. This is the story of the whole Bible from Adam to the second coming. You say what? I didn't see that in it. Well, we're going to learn that today. What it means. Now, yeah, you know, the pre-parable, the parable didn't start till verse 30, but in verse 25 it said a lawyer came to him. Now, a lawyer was one that was skilled in the Mosaic law in those days and asked Jesus, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? That was his question. Jesus asked him and said, what does the law say? He's a lawyer, he should know the law. So he said, he, uh, Jesus asked him, what, did, what does the law say? And he quoted Deuteronomy 6, 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And he also quoted um, Leviticus 19, 18. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. So that was the answer to the questions. Now the parable starts in verse 30. Now Jerusalem, you know, to, you know, the, you know there's a road and it's still there today, I've been on it. Yeah, Jerusalem to Jericho is about 17 miles. 
and it uh, it descends about 2,500 feet. And in those days, it was a pretty dangerous place. There was caves there and rocks. There was robbers. So, you know, if, if you went by yourself there, you'd probably get killed. So it was a pretty dangerous place. Now, it talk, talks about there was a certain man on that road. That man is Adam. Adam was on a... And he fell amongst thieves. And Satan 10.10 10 says that Satan is a thief. Satan is a th thief. So Adam f fell amongst thieves. And, and, and the thieves did, did three things to him. They stripped him of his raiment, which is poverty. They wounded him, which is sickness. And they half killed him, which is spiritual death. And they're, they're, that's the threefold curse of the law. Poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. Adam was thrown out of the garden. He lost everything. Like he, he had food there, he had, you know, he didn't need clothes, but he had everything supplied for him there. But he was thrown out of the garden into poverty. He had to work, you know, by the sweat of his brow and his hands to get food and clothing. And you know, disease started you know, to set into Adam after he left the garden. And he eventually died. It took a few hundred years, but he eventually died because sickness came upon him. And he, he was half dead because he died spiritually in the garden of Eden. So that's the threefold thing of the curse. In verse 31, 32, by chance a priest and then a Levite came by looking at him and crossed over to the other side. Now, both represent the law. The priest and the Levi represent the law. The law came with man, you know, with all its rituals and sacrifices. Notice neither one could help. The law didn't help people. You know, the law was never meant to save man, but to inform him that he was a sinner and needs a saviour. That's what the law was for. In Romans 3.20 it says, Therefore by the deeds of the law no flesh will be justified in his sight, God's sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. In, in Galatians 3.19 it says, What then does the law serve? It, it was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Who's the seed? Jesus came. That he was the seed. That that, um, that law was in place till Jesus came. And what happened when he came? Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. So both the priest and the Levite passed by. The law would not have been um, introduced if man, Adam, had accepted God's word by faith. He wouldn't have needed the law. Abraham lived by faith and lived in God's blessings, but he didn't know the law. He wasn't under the law. Now the good news, verse 33, a Samaritan was on a journey and saw him and he didn't cross to the other side. He had compassion on him. Jesus came. He was on a journey and he saw us. He saw sinful man and the state we were in, and he came to us. Hallelujah. This, this is good news. So th thank God for Jesus, our good Samaritan. He did not come by chance. He was on a journey. He was on a, a specific journey with a definite purpose. He, he did not pass on to the other side. He came directly to us. John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So Jesus came on a journey and this is the good Samaritan we're talking about here. In, in, in verse 34, this is, this is interesting, the good Samaritan, what did he do? He went to him, he bound up his wounds, he poured in oil, he poured in wine and he set him on his own beast and took him to an inn and handed him over to the innkeeper for keeping. So let, you know, let's look at some of those things. He bound his wounds. There is healing in the atonement work of Jesus. Healing, I'm talking about physical healing. 
you know, the second um, cur you know, the second curse introduced by the thief was wounding him. He, he wounded the man on the road, which is sickness. He caused sickness. Jesus died to redeem us from sickness and sin. Hallelujah. Psalm 103. You all know this verse. Psalm 103 verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits for us today, who forgiveth all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Jesus came to forgive us of our sins and heal us of our sicknesses. Hallelujah. He poured in the oil and the wine. Now this is interesting. Both represent the Holy Spirit. The oil represents the new birth. And the wine represents the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Two separate things. Don't let people tell it. Yes, we do receive the Holy Spirit when we get born again. But we, that, that, um, that's not the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So the oil and the wine represents the Holy Spirit. In the, in the uh, parable, well, I think it's a parable of the, you know, the wine skins in Matthew 9, 17. If they put fresh wine into old wine skins, they burst. Because when when there's no wine in, in the wine skins, they become dry. So what they used to do is get oil and they would rub it into the wine skins and put new wine into it. Now the oil, I said, represents being born again. So we need to be born again first before we get filled with the Spirit. I remember once, you know, this pastor uh, pastor um, asked people out to be filled with the Spirit and he asked me to pray for them. And I, I prayed for this guy and it, and it was just like praying to a brick wall. And, and then the Holy Spirit said to me, ask me, is he born again? And he wasn't. And I got him born again and I got him filled with the Spirit. So the, the, the oil comes first and then the wine. And that's what it's talking about. And um, it says there that he set him on his own beast. In Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30, Jesus is talking to the people. He says, come unto me, all you a labour and a heavy laden. Is that you? It is with me sometimes. <laughs> and I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He put this wounded man on, on his own donkey or ass. He, he took the burden off him. He had a burden. He couldn't walk. He was wounded. But he put him on his own beast. And he brought him to an inn and handed him over to the innkeeper. Now the inn represents the church. When you get born again, you're introduced, you come into the church. You're baptised into the body of Christ. And that's what I was talking about there. And, and the innkeeper is the Holy Spirit. Jesus left us, and he, but he left us the Holy Spirit. And that's what that represents. He put him on his, his own donkey, took him to introduce him into the church and left the Holy Spirit with him. In John 14, 16, it says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. We have the Holy Spirit in us right now. He's our comforter. He's our standby, our advocate. So that's what that represents. In verse 35, it says, He departed and paid the host two pence. Now, this is you know, significant. And he said that he's coming back for him. In Acts 1 9 and 11, it says, Now, you know, this is just before the day of Pentecost when the Lord left the earth, just before the, the day of Pentecost. Now, when he had spoken these things, while they were watching, he was taken up into a cloud, receiving him out of their sight. And while they looked you know, steadfastly, steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men, he, he paid two pence to the innkeeper, remember, two, two men in white apparel, who also, said, who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come back in like manner. Jesus is coming back. 
That's his promise. He, he, he promised the man in the inn that he's coming back for him. He's promised us that he's coming back for us. Isn't that good news? He's coming back in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. So he went from earth and he went straight to heaven. He's coming back the same way. Hallelujah. So that, that, that was the close of the parable. Then in verse 36, then Jesus asked the lawyer, in verse 36, 37. So which of these three do you think was the neighbour to him who fell amongst the thieves? And the lawyer said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Show mercy on people. And that's what this, this church will, will show mercy on people. That's what we all should do. We all have that gift. Now the conclusion. We are the ones on the road without Jesus or we were. We are helpless on the road. He came and redeemed us from the curse of the law, which is poverty, sickness and spiritual death. All we have to do is receive eternal life, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. Now that's also repeated in Matthew 22. I'd just like to give an appeal now, which I, I, I would have thought there would have been more people here. There should have been people here today that aren't here. If you are without eternal life, the plan of salvation is simple. Turn away from the priest and the Levi, your own works, your creeds, your own doctrines. Turn away from that. And realise you are helpless we are helpless without Jesus. Look to the good Samaritan, Jesus. He is the only one with something to offer. He's the only one. That's not other people, other religions. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but through him. He wants to give you, you know, the oil of the new birth and the wine of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. He will welcome you into the inn, into the church and leave you with the innkeeper, the Holy Spirit, to look after us. He will come back for you and you will be with him forever. That's good news, isn't it? That, you know, that, you know, that whole parable is good news to the unbeliever. I've used that before. I used it over in Fiji once and about four or five people came out and gave their life to the Lord. Kids, they were kids. Teenagers, this um, this brother and sister just turned up in church one day. The pastor didn't know who they were, and they came out. They held their hands to come down the front. And it was an exciting time. And in that in that service, I was I was praying for them to be filled with the Spirit. There's about twelve youth in a row all came out, and I started to pray for one one girl. I think it was to be filled with the Spirit. And the guy down the end started speaking in tongues, and it went right up the row. I didn't even lay hands on them. So praise you, bless you this week and um, go and do it likewise. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are the good Samaritan, not the bad Samaritan, the good Samaritan, that you love us so much, that you sent your son for us so we wouldn't have to die and go to hell, but we have eternal life with you. And you thank you, for, Lord, for you know, forgiveness of sins and redeeming us from the curse of the law, which is sickness, poverty, and spiritual death. Father, we thank you that we have a future with you. And I just pray, Lord, as we go out this week, that at least one person we can talk to about the Lord, just one person, each person here, and I believe there's going to be some good testimonies this week coming forth in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. May you all be blessed. Amen.